I hear a lot of nonsense these days about simulation hypothesis. I think the best way to understand it is to go through history that formed this movement. Um, so let's go through this chart here that starts all the way back in 400 BC and goes till uh, near future. Um, we'll start first with um, a kind of definition of uh, fields of science and uh, human knowledge that I believe forms the simulation theory or hypothesis and what is not part of it. I think physics, biology, philosophy, computer science, and yes, religion are part of simulation hypothesis. What is not is esoterics, uh, which you can find a lot of fancy worded books online and read about this. I, 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 I'm an engineer, I believe it's nonsense. Um, cults, yeah, all kinds of strange uh, beliefs that are not part of religion. Religion is uh, very separate from that because religion usually has a serious the theological uh, foundation. Um, then cyberpunk movement, I have nothing against that. Uh, it just, uh, uh, it's a fun part of it, but I don't believe, believe it's a scientific uh, scientific stuff. So superheroes, hardcore sci-fi stories and movies and that stuff. Though Matrix is special, so we'll, we'll get into it. All kinds of mumbo jumbo. Uh, yeah, so uh, a lot of, uh, if, you, if you Google simulation hypothesis, you can see a lot of conversation like I saw that or I saw that cat disappear or I don't know, president is strange and people think uh, that those are signs of simulation hypothesis or so that we are simulated. That is, uh, that is not part of it, really. It is fun, though. Okay, um, so let's begin with 400 BC. Um, there were some religious movements even before that, but we don't know much about it. So the true first um, properly documented idea that we could be uh, living a dream and we don't really know um, if everything that happens is real. Uh, I would say Plato's cave alleg allegory and uh, also Chinese butterfly dream idea, those are the main and oldest uh, ideas that uh, humans came up with that they thought that, uh, okay, whatever we see and sense might not be real, and it's just for us to, you know, like, take, for example, Plato's cave. On the right, uh, you see a picture, obviously, because you saw grass or plants uh, or trees before, you can guess that this is, um, this is probably a branch with some leaves on it. But imagine a human who lived in a cave and never came outside. Uh, would he understand what he sees if he just sees the shades, the shadow of um, of this plant? Uh, that is pretty difficult to to grasp. He might have all kinds of wild guesses, but he will not know what it really is. Same same as our senses in 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 life, we we have uh, you know eyesight, we have hearing, and what is seeing and 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 sense. That's our understanding of reality. But reality might be completely different and we don't know. So that is uh, 400 BC, that is a really long time ago. Um, 400 AD, so that is famous Hindus uh, Advaita Vedanta Maya uh, religion or movement. It's hard to define what it is, but uh, it was discovered in Brahma Sutras uh, scrolls and um, the idea there is pretty much the same, that uh, there is God who dreams and we are part of this dream. Then there is a long, long jump all the way to uh, 1635 and that is first um, play actually, uh, not a novel, uh, by Pedro Barca called Life is a Dream, which also documents this, this idea of uh, us living the dream. 
and there is no no defined difference between dream and reality. It's very hard to to separate those two. Um, my favorite in in this period, and if you see on the left, uh, I called it occasional philosophical breakthroughs. But this long period in human history is when. A lot of uh, smart people, visionaries, uh, thought about this concept and produced these uh, papers or books or plays, uh, like for Pedro Varka. René Descartes is a um, very important scientist and philosopher of those times. And uh, his evil demon um, concept is, uh, I think, very, very clear. Uh, on the topic, because what he says is essentially when he would dream and uh, wake up and he would not fully understand what his sense was real or not. And uh, in that sense, uh, he says that if my senses deceived me at least once, how you can trust them? That is uh, in my opinion, amazing quote from, from René, and uh, defines it very clearly in very simple words. I uh, highly encourage you to read uh, his whole uh, whole thing on this. Okay, so that is pretty much this uh, long period of occasional philosophical breakthroughs in, in, on, on this subject. Um, so we move to a much more exciting times, uh, I call this period a quantum physics uh, period because that's that's a period when we actually understood how weird the physical world really is. And it all started with um, Thomas Jan in 1801 and uh, his famous double slit experiment. What he discovered, and you can see the experiment on the right side, is that uh, we have a duality of article and wave. In, in, in all, uh, pretty much in all uh, elemental particles, which is electrons and photons and so on. So that is very fundamental to simulation hypothesis because we understand now that, well, he understood it a long time ago, but he didn't know about computers. Uh, so what he, he, he saw is that light, can behave as a wave in one way, uh, convenient for, for, for the light, and behave like a particle in another way, when it is convenient for the light. Isn't it strange? Um, there were many discussions about why that happens, but there is no real answer till today. Um, again, read, uh, watch videos on that if you, if you want. I intentionally put a picture without a human I, because if you start googling and researching this, you will see a lot of videos showing the eye seeing this uh, duality of light. Well, uh, in, in real life, that's not exactly what happens. It's uh, detectors of laser beams that actually detect uh, this duality. And, um, well, there are a few more double slit experiments that are being proposed to in involve actual intelligence in this, but we'll talk about it later. Um, 19, um, 19th century is um, pretty much uh, all about Thomas Young and his uh, formation of, of quantum, quantum uh, physics. 20th century begins with a uh, uh, very interesting discovery by Max Planck. Uh, he defined a so-called Planck constant. Planck constant is a very important uh, constant in physics. It's also a very tiny number. And what it defines is um, that we cannot measure anything below that constant, neither in distance nor time. Uh, so both distance and time cannot be measured below that constant. And that is very fundamental because isn't, doesn't it sound similar to pixels? Because that, that quantifies space in a way. Uh, again, people back then didn't think that way. 
because they didn't know about pixels and computers. Um, but Planck constant is very interesting constant. You, you might read about it. It's a little bit uh, mathematically involved, though. Um, then 1927, uh, Heisenberg um, does his famous experiments and comes up with a concept of quantum uncertainty principle. What that brings into this whole weirdness of quantum physics is um, probabilities. And uh, turns out we have no clue at which moment in time a certain particle is. Uh, and that is also fundamental because that means we live in probabilistic world, undefined world. That has huge consequences to all kinds of um, all kinds of ideas, uh, including the free will idea. So at this lowest level, free will of humans might be actually undefined in future. So we don't have a destiny, like many say, because even at lowest particle level, we don't know where where that particle is at any moment in time. Uh, that is very important one. And that's pretty much uh, that period. Um, very important for hypothesis, um, simulation hypothesis. And um, we move forward with periods that I call a computer-inspired sci-fi. And this period is uh, defined by Alan Turing famous Alan Turing invention of a modern concept of computer. Um, read about the guy, watch movies, he's just amazing. So as computers popped up, a lot of authors, sci-fi authors especially, they, they learned about the concept of computer and their imagination started to click and they wrote a lot of books. I would say this is a period when we, we see a lot of new books and uh, later videos pop up about uh, simulation hypothesis. Uh, well, it was not defined as simulation hypothesis, but uh, the concept was there that humans live in simulated reality. So, 1940, uh, 1940s, Alan Turing uh, defines a modern computer. Then, uh, around that time, uh, Fermi paradox is formed by a uh, nuclear physicist, Fermi. W what he was um, speculating about is that uh, if you discovered all these uh, trillions of stars out there, even though they're far away, but still speed of light is pretty fast, uh, why we don't receive any signals from intelligent life if uh, all these other star system ha systems have many, many Earth-like planets with possibly Earth-like life on it and some civilizations. Just probability-wise, it had to happen already and we should have received the signals, but space so far looks completely devoid of um, any signals. So are we alone in the universe? This uh, paradox, it is called paradox because uh, there is a contradiction between likelihood of that happening and what we actually see in life. So, obviously, simulation hypothesis fits perfectly here because we are alone, we are simulated, and we live just because uh, we are the central point here in this universe. Um, 1950s, again, Alan Turing genius, he comes up with definition of the Turing test, which is a definition of artificial intelligence. And it is still used today to define AI. Um, also in 1950s, Kreitz creates the first computer game. Very primitive, tic-tac-toe, but it is a computer game. Uh, there were some attempts before that, but proper computer game would be this one. Um, again, then, like I said, because of all this computer thing and, and microchips later, uh, a lot of authors began to write novels. And I would say Philip Dick was one of the first. 
who grabs the idea and he writes uh, probably the first novel that kind of defines simulated reality simulated by some kind of machine and it's called The Trouble with Bubbles where um, gods uh, pretty much create these little wo ro worlds that they can control and they, uh, they entertain themselves with those worlds. Uh, he, this guy also wrote a lot of other books on, on the topic. Um, meanwhile, in completely different field of science, uh, micro, my, molecular bi biology, uh, Crick and Watson defined the DNA. I mean, DNA was known before, but nobody had a clue what that is really. They actually identify the structure of a DNA and understand the basic elements of it. A breakthrough, they got a Nobel Prize for that, and um, DNA is extremely important. I had a separate picture on, on that uh, to explain for simulation hypothesis. This is often overlooked by many hypothesis uh, uh, theory people out there. Uh, 1959, the Twilight Zone TV series, first, uh, as far as I know, first uh, uh, broadcasted uh, videos about simulated reality. Some episodes have those. Another important novel, uh, Sim Simulacron 3, uh, comes out in 1964. That is, um, this novel is uh, very high quality, defines the concepts of uh, simulated world within simulated wor world within simulated world, so uh, it can be recursive and uh, has many other ideas to, he essentially he asks questions like what is the meaning of life in, 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 in that context of being simulated and what, uh, what does it mean to be human. And uh, two movies are based on that, uh, the German one um, the German one, I um, forgot the name, I, it's actually a, a breakthrough, it's low quality movie, but it, I think it's a breakthrough movie. And then of course the 13th floor uh, that, is, that came out much later, also based, I would say, on this novel. Um, meanwhile, again, in completely different field, uh, Konrad Zusser, a German th uh, computer physicist person uh, pretty much starts the concept of digital physics. His book uh, called Calculating Space is, um, is a book that essentially speculates that our universe is digital and everything is digitized. Uh, first uh, serious uh, scientists, I would say, who wrote a book about that, and um, it's still a very important book till today. Uh, official, official scientific community is still not sure about that, but that is interesting event in history for simulation hypothesis. Um, yeah, so then in 1973 we got this German movie, World on Wire, uh, that is English translation, the, 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 this, this is a German movie, so I don't know German, so I don't know the exact name, but that is based on that novel, similar country. So that is a period um, that I would say uh, computer-inspired sci-fi and all this imagination in, in the humanity, which we slowly transition to modern era. But be, just before that, I want to explain how important the DNA concept is to the simulation hypothesis. So, um, DNA uh, structure, let's start with uh, Darwin first. So, we have ev evolution theory of evolution. Yes, that we have enough undeniable proof that that happened, the evolution process. We have so many. Uh, discoveries, uh, archaeological discoveries, prove that. And they uh, just see that to deny the evolution. What we cannot, though, um, understand is how the first cell formed. And uh, when Darwin wrote his book, he had no clue how complex that one single cell organism really is. And 
the complexity is just insane. So how just out of nowhere randomly uh, complex program, which generates essentially a program, uh, was formed? That's a mystery and I think it is a sign of uh, creation there, the DNA molecule. And uh, there are serious uh, microbiologists that actually support it, even today. There is still no, uh, you know, there's always debate, and majority of scientists still think even the first cell was uh, just formed from essentially chemical processes. But uh, there is a debate right now on that, and uh, this is a biggest mystery. If you can crack that one, that can put many things in their places. Um, so, modern era. I would say uh, for simulation hypothesis, this area is defined by software development and games, computer games. Because um, games gave yet another perspective on simulation hypothesis. And what we see on the left side of the screenshot is same car render it with textures and without. This concept of, uh, of viewer perspective is super important because what it means is that when programmers program the games, uh, we only want to render in high quality, high definition things that a uh, player sees. We, we don't necessarily need to render in high definition or even render at all things that a conscious person doesn't see. So that concept of viewer perspective is somehow interestingly con connected to that famous double slit experiment and duality of light of wave and particle duality of light. Because that is um, kind of fits very nicely together this concept. Why, why would we need to render every single particle in this world if we don't see, don't interact with it at this very moment? Um, again, you can read and watch videos in more details on that. This video is only to give you the historical perspective. Um, 1992, uh, ID Software produces uh, this Wolfenstein uh, game, a 3D game. I would call it a breakthrough because it felt at that time very realistic. And humans suddenly realized that we can go and navigate these virtual 3D worlds, which are very much like our 3D world. And um, a lot of excitement was brought up by, by that. From that moment on, we can see that games only got more and more realistic with VR and IR picking up recently and so on. Um, why I included Matrix movie here is because you cannot deny the cultural impact of that movie. And I st uh, many people attribute uh, that this movie was kind of inspired by other arts um, from the past, uh, other books. I think uh, you cannot deny how important Wachowski's brothers were to, to, to this movie. They, they wrote the script and uh, the movie was made in a very visionary way, uh, showing all the possibilities and so on. Um, so I think it's still very important for the whole hypo simulation hypothesis uh, history. In 2003, Nick Bostrom, a uh, real philosopher, uh, publishes his famous simulation argument paper. Now that one is important for two reasons. One is that a serious, uh, you can say, scientist uh, wrote a paper on this topic. And for the second reason is that he did some serious breakthroughs in the in the thought about simulation hypothesis, and uh, he found certain he was ma he managed to calculate even probability of us living in simulation if there are um, uh, and maybe other simulation existence. So that's whole thing. You you probably want to watch a video or read separately because um, the three statements he makes, uh, you need to really go through them and fully understand before moving forward. So just mention here research on your own, um, really important paper. 
2017. Uh, there is a paper published by Caltech uh, PhD people there uh, called On Testing the Simulation Theory. And the idea there is to, to improve uh, the delayed choice Wheeler's experiment uh, and double slit experiment to prove this, uh, beyond you know reasonable doubt that the viewer affects the quantum quant quant's behavior and that is uh, still ongoing I had, uh, I had contacted the guys recently and they said they still work on these experiments defined in that paper even today so we'll see uh, i'm very excited to see the results from that uh, 2018 elon musk popularizes this simulation hypothesis thing by making a public statement i think it's important if uh, a lot of people start questioning and uh, researching on their own this subject i think it's very interesting and important contribution from elon besides all other things he did um, Meanwhile, same year, MIT confirms quantum entanglement uh, doing uh, research on quasar data. And it proves beyond reasonable doubt that quantum entanglement exists and it's a real thing. Another weirdness, by the way, um, can, can only be explained uh, really by simulation hypothesis in a reasonable way because what it actually says that two particles no matter how far away they are from each other, they, 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 they can somehow affect each other's spin, which is an unbelievable concept. Um, 2019, um, I, I see a new wave uh, of books, including my own, on um, subject of simulation hypothesis coming from software people. I would say, uh, even though there is some criticism on uh, the simulation hypothesis book by Rees Work. I still uh, love that book uh, because it is very thorough and it brings all these concepts of biology, physics, uh, religion, and uh, you know computer science all together to prove the point. And I think it's a great book. It's also easy to understand book. Um, and now 2020, we are waiting for Matrix 4, which is important uh, again in terms of culture. We need uh, more, more things to happen, of course, before we really move from simulation hypothesis to simulation theory, because simulation theory is a harder word for that, uh, for that thing. Hypothesis, you can hypothesize many things, but um, yeah. Well, that's pretty much all I wanted to show you. This is a whole uh, history here again. And um, if you want to learn uh, about uh, all these aspects deeper, just uh, you know, research on your own. And uh, also you can buy my book, Simulation, Answers in Simulation, um, that addresses the simulation hypothesis, if it turns out to be true. What does it mean for, for us to live in, in, in this simulation? And what is the meaning of life in that case? So I, I would recommend my own book in this case. Thank you.